gonna go. It's gonna be a um, sort of quiet hanging out stream. If anyone wants to chat, uh, you are welcome to. But I'm not gonna be talking as much as I have in my last couple streams. I'm gonna just be um, <clears throat> hanging out, doing some more work on this jam game for a few hours tonight. Um, I'm also popping in to see if the yeah I still haven't got the handmade network bot working so that I gotta try again but let's let's see since I'm just chilling and hanging out I would love to put on music but the only music I could put on is the Mr. Fourth music because anything else could be have copyright strikes. Let's see if I'm into that. I'm gonna try putting it on. Um, or you know what? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just not gonna, I'm gonna play music for myself. I'm not gonna play it for you guys. If, if you're watching and you want music, you listen to what you like. You control the volume, you control the, uh, you control the mood. I'm gonna put on Let's see, let me make sure it's not gonna play through Twitch. I'm gonna put on, you know, we're working on Roguelikes, I'm gonna put on the Spelunky uh, soundtrack to get started. The walls are shifting, okay. Cheeto, hey, yeah, I, um, I haven't streamed a whole lot recently but i'm gonna be into it for the i'm planning moving forward to be into it right now i'm doing a uh, seven day jam so i'll be more active than usual um but after that i'm gonna try to settle into a monday friday routine to stream uh project stuff and fun stuff with programming by the way how is my voice and can you confirm that you're not hearing my music Young Lane, awesome. Good to see ya. <clears throat> Alrighty. Like I said, not gonna chat too much. A big part of this project, I'll, I'll chat a little bit so that we have some shared context. A big part of this project in, is that I have to do a lot of writing in order to finish it. So I've got, I'm, <clears throat> I've got until the 10th of March to submit this to the jam. I'm gonna keep working on it all month, but I just happened to start it at the same time at at the right time to qualify for the seven day roguelike so i'm gonna tr submit it and see what the roguelike community feels about it i think that what i'm making is a roguelike but it's a story game so it might feel quite different it might feel out of place maybe i will get disqualified that'll be fun but either way i i do need to focus because writing is hard i recently did a pixel art game jam and I thought that, you know, I was doing a good job there of scoping things in, you know, taking, doing, t t working on just the most important parts from day to day. Doing that with writing has been much more challenging. I keep finding myself starting to write and get all this creative inspiration I want to add in so many dynamics that would truly be um, too much for this jam. So, <clears throat> yeah, I need to focus and I need to, in particular, preference jam and mentality which includes scope control i need to be much more aggressive about scope control for the amount for the so that i can get all this writing done and the writing includes actual writing but there's also a lot of coding to link all the writing up together because it is it is after all a game and i don't have a story engine that makes any of this linking easy so it's very very uh slow grind Okay, I'm currently adding that. Let's go do that.
if you're playing the Amulet of Yender game mode, then the player passes the language checks. They read the ancient language. Cool. So if the player passes the language check, Uh, let's see, I want an end of paragraph right here. Okay. I already did a lot of the actual text writing earlier so that I can This is a spot where if I get time, I might want to do better layout. Why is that not um, recognized still? Oh, gotta put it in over here. Yep, yep. This is the difficulty of uh, building building a, a dynamic story game without a story engine for sure. Lots of manual linking and manual markup. Why is that italic? I don't know, but it's cool. It's fine.
What do you do with an entrance? Marking it. Signed, posted, framed. So we got the writing color and let's let's also mark this it might be fun to go and track down a different font for written text. Like that would be smart, that'd feel good. But um That feels too white. Um, let's try something like flipping the concept I had here to like that. So it's actually pretty dark text. That's kind of what I'm looking for. Yeah. So with that, there's a couple things that like definitely lay out stuff would, if I was gonna do any place, or if there's any place where I was gonna do layout work to improve look and feel of the game, this is the first spot where I think that attention is deserved. It feels like this needs to be centered and uh, in a different font and the spacing needs to be controlled differently. So I would need to flex, make more flexible features in uh, those parts. Oops. Yeah. That'll have to be good enough for now though. I don't want to get caught up on the wrong thing. My goal today is to fill out enough of the dynamic parts of the story. Enough of the story to start getting to like the cool dynamic stuff that Will make this a roguelike. I want it to. I want to. By the end of my goal is by for the end. By the end of the night, to plugged in all of the writing work I've done on the big plot line, and uh, start turning it into a real roguelike. At least in the way that in the way that it's going to be a roguelike at all. I want it to start getting there. Right now, it's just a totally fixed story with a couple of uh, shuffled parameters every time. I want to get to the point where it, it has a distinctive roguelike feel. So I don't want to get caught up on font and layout. So um, let's add in Dungeon 
man. Okay, so in order to change the name of something, I've got the file name, the, the file name again for the include, the function name in the definition, the function name in the list, and the function name at all of the use locations. So that's, that's the friction level I'm dealing with here. How could I make that any less? It's not obvious how it could be done. One thing I could do is to write a meta batch script that generates the include list. It would take out one place. I could use the same batch script to generate the X frags. I couldn't generate the rest of this, but I could generate the X frags from that list. That would take out two, and then I'd be down to where the function gets named, where the file name, the file name, the function name, and the usage locations. That's like, that's like, that's a substantial improvement. I think that that'll be worth it. Okay, detour, detour for productivity's pur purposes that I think will pay off even over the course of a week. Um, I need a script. Scripts go in my bin folder. This is gonna be a jam script, uh, yes. For the quest, yes. Um, this is gonna be called the quest bake fragments.bat. Okay, so let's start with a little Just some basics here. Let's plug this in. We'll make this uh, the quest bake fragments. Cool. So the quest bake fragments. Footer panel. bin jam did I call it jam didn't I call it jams everywhere else <sighs> okay can fix that um, let's see where's my thingy finish this part so jams bin jams jam the quest the quest big fragment stop that that's all we got to do close this now let's try and go in there we need the jams there we go Reload this, and F3. Okay, we gotta fix that. Bin slash. If forward slashes won't be accepted since this is a Windows raw command, not a git bash. Is that the idea? Load project, F3. Hello world, there we go. So we got uh, the bake script running. Now what we want to do is a loop over 
Well, let's see. Let's start with echo current directory. What what path does this happen in? Um, save dirty files. Yes, please. Please save all files for running this command. There we go. So then we want to set the fragder equal to current directory slash source jams request what did I call it source jams request story Now let's do a for loop. I have in a few of these um, recent streams done this. Uh, research under the sat. I think no, this build bad doesn't have it. So like maybe this one, maybe. Here we go. So If I remember correctly, I was having a hard time getting it to loop over something by putting in the path. Let's try this. So if I do this, and then I just echo I, what does that look like? Get rid of that. Okay, so that's actually what I want. So I think what I need to do next is some string manipulation with batch. Um, This is even worse than the bash scripting stuff. It's real bad. Uh, maybe I should do this in a bash script. That might make more sense. All right. Uh, delete you. Taking my project file. Said we're going to git bash an sh file. And then I just need a dot sh. To get started, how about build fly? Okay. Well, I need one that can do. Yeah, we still need to like track these down. This way it'll probably be fastest. 
bash script iterate files in directory. Okay, let's try this. Great, so that's good, except it's the wrong directory. So let's do fragdir equals current working directory. Um, Got to remember the syntax for a sec. So let's see. Yeah, yeah. Do I ever do like? Do I have like P current working directory CD? No. Okay. So let me just comment this all out for a sec, and let's echo until I find the right syntax. How am, I, how am I forgetting this? All right. There we go. Source jams the quest story. Okay, there we go. So that gives me Why does it say echo echo file name? <laughs> Let's try uh thing. Okay. So the next thing I want is I want to put that into a list. Great, so you can see it's echoed them all. It's put them all on one line to be annoying, but uh, it's still doing the right thing. Now what we wanna do is we want to <sighs> truncate I want to run an experiment. I want to see what would happen if I did this like this. Ah, okay. So I can avoid the need to truncate 
if I achieve this like this. See, we're going to take the root directory and save it. We're going to take the the quest directory and save it. We're going to cd into that directory because that way you can just do this and you get the, the, the list that I want. And now I want to print two things. One is a, I want to echo out a file. So, um, Gonna want a for loop that looks like this. Um, I think these are one based arrays with. How do you do? Yeah, there's the syntax. We want. Oh, there's zero based. It's just the parameters to the, the function are one based. Lovely. Okay. Okay. So this gives us the, this is a crazy way of saying, give me the count on this list. And then for each thing in there, we're going to say echo this syntax. Excellent. That gets us pretty close to where we want to be. The only thing we're missing now is we got to put this in a file. So how can I um, get this ready to be put into a file? Does this add the quotes that I need? Yes, but it also, ah, there we go. And then I can add that. There you go. <laughs> All right, I'm going to simplify. No need for a list. Grab that and just do it in one go, do it in one little go like that. But we want to Okay. This is going to go out to then bash append to file. So if I do that, I can create that file. Okay. Great. So I'm going to put that right inside of here. So I no longer have to maintain that manually. Now that's only half the problem. The other thing I want is uh, I have a list. I have a file right here called string list. I'm going to move half that file somewhere else. So we're going to call this the frag list function file. I stick these in there and I want to recreate that the same way. So to do that, 
I'm gonna need to do something similar like this. I'm gonna the quest frag list .h becomes empty and then I'm gonna fill it up like this. Hold on. No, I'll keep it this way. Okay. Um, for this one, I'm actually going to change directories again and go into the story directory so that I don't have to do this. And now the file name is almost what I need, but it includes a little dot C. So I want to do a string parse to remove file extension. That should be pretty easy to find. In fact, I probably have it somewhere in my code already, but I'm going to just Google it or internet, internet search engine it. <clears throat> Generic search engine it. Oh, but problem. That's going to put that in the wrong directory. Yeah, we don't want that. So let's not change directory. Let's loop over the story directory. Or you know what? We could do cd story and we could do dot dot slashes to hit the right file path for the output. Now we got the red exclamation point and uh, so not quite it. Um, we don't want you or you. We don't want that either. We want X frag. Boom. Okay. So that is almost perfect, except now where I use the string list function header, which apparently I've obliterated. Strings list, that's the difference. Strings list, that's just a bad name. String list, string list, I need to include the frag list. Oops. Um, we're actually not doing anything with the frag list here. So, actually, yeah, we can just sort of simplify here. This could be considered just to operate on the frag list now. Brilliant. Okay, so that was a little detour. Hopefully, um, hopefully it pays off. I think it will. Okay, so we've gotten this far. Now the um, the other thing I, I haven't actually tested yet is let's take a look. Say I'm not going for the Amulet of Yendor. Go to the dungeon. You cannot read it. Enter the dungeon.
Good. Okay. So, I want to get to the point where, like I said, this becomes like an alive dynamic story. But I also want it to get there without sacrificing the ability for it to actually be narrative. So I'm going to try to be threading that needle today, trying to build trying to build towards both in tiny increments that, that, that are sort of balanced rather than I want to go all in. So here's all the writing I did to sort of plan out what, what, I, what I want to take the player through in the main Amulet of Yinder plotline. Uh, I want to start plugging that in, but I at the same time want to get there by actually having things to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip through. The way I'm going to achieve this is I'm going to skip through because if I take the next thing, like if I take these three things, which are all supposed to be equally balanced, they're, they're, they're sort of, the it, they're, these events can happen in any order and they all have to happen before you move on to number four. If I take these as ne my next step, then when I'm done plugging that in, the progress I will have made is I still won't have a finished story and I will only have enough interaction to carry you through to this part, right? So what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start skipping ahead. I'm going to build the piece that connects from this phase to this phase now, okay? And then I'll add in this later if I want to actually have the check for this. But for now, I will hack it to just this one node in the process. And then, um, so let me start like marking up where I want to focus my attention. We want attention here on, uh, let's see. We want attention here on this part. Second phase. Okay. We've done this. We want to do this. Okay. I'm going to do this path to get started and this part those kind of go together this path and this path And we'll count that as bonus. I won't necessarily add this. We could just end right here. The story would be complete. Adding this only makes sense if I have a lot more. Well, adding this makes sense either way possibly, but it makes the most sense if I get to come back and add in these things and these things and some of these other things. So I'm gonna just build this sort of main trunk of the story tonight. And then I'm gonna start trying to build in game connective tissue around this. So this is this is like um, this is the main path of progression through the bits of difficulty. And then the uh, the rest of the challenge is to actually build gameplay rather than uh, fixed story nodes. <clears throat> okay. 
Okay, so when you enter the dungeon, um, I guess for now what I'll have this do is I'll have it introduce a new kind of payload, which is going to be A new dungeon level, new dungeon area, begin dungeon area, payload. So this will begin a dungeon area. What do I mean by that? Why is that not just a transition to another piece of story state? Well, because when we begin the playing, and this is a game, um, I need a spot where there's a chance for the player to make decisions about what's what their approach to exploration will be like so if i was making a classic roguelike you would make this decision by how you navigate around corners and how thoroughly you sort of scour the whole grid and how many times you press the search button right if you're playing net hack you're sitting there pounding the s button looking for looking for hidden doors if you're playing crawl you're hitting o and and like auto searching at every floor until it gets too dangerous and um you know if you're playing spelunky maybe you're searching a lot maybe you're rushing to the end because you get farther if you don't actually engage with too many of the side quests right so you have different dungeon exploration styles but you don't express them to the game by saying here's the style i want to use you express them to the game implicitly through the movements right tactical strategical decisions in this i still want you to express the decision of how you explore the dungeon but it's going to be through a narrative interface and so it, it makes more sense to focus on the narrative of whether you're exploring the dungeon with caution from looking for traps or going quickly and trying to get done as fast as possible or going quietly so that you don't alert other adventurers and creatures of the dungeon to your presence so the different approaches you have to exploration should be in your hands through a narrative interface and even if you weren't making a decision there it's not necessarily the true case that every time you transition in a game like this that you transition from a fixed point to a fixed point it's not like i'm at state a and so when i click the button it takes me to state b and that state has to be linked up hard. And right here is a case where I don't want that. When you say enter the dungeon, the first thing you see is the result of procedural generation. Right? So I can't say link to this specific story fragment next. It has to be let the game engine kind of do a more rich command that might dispatch different story fragments or um, might make certain other decisions before before deciding what happens next. So begin dungeon area will, for instance, be a, a payload. You know, this is actually gonna be a command. So it's like payload game command, uh, not a different kind of payload. And then um, and so generate keys was one of our things. What we're gonna do here is begin dungeon floor, right? Something like that. So here it gets to do some generation, generation work and then decide in a procedural manner where to transition to next. So uh, right now, I'm not actually gonna fill this in with all of the cool stuff that it could have, like gameplay, because like I said, we are still trying to connect through that chunk trunk of the, of the story. So what's gonna happen is instead, when you begin the dungeon floor, we're gonna, we're gonna just sort of hack this here. If 
Uh, let's see, we're gonna grab the game state to get started. Probably don't need that anymore. If the game state purpose says that you are state game purpose, an amulet of Yender game, we'll do one thing and otherwise we'll do something else. Hey, um, pausing for a moment because I've just noticed that OBS says I'm streaming zero kilobits per second. Is my stream frozen? The stream preview makes me look frozen. It says I have zero viewers. All right. 